After using the VKB Gladiator NXTs for almost two years, I can see why they are the most popular premium stick in the Star Citizen community. And for good reason. They're relatively affordable, have a ton of bindable buttons and doodads, can be customized to your liking, and have excellent build quality for the price. Thank you so much to all the supporters that make this channel possible. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Hardware Guide. I'm Subliminal and today I'll be giving you my full review of the VKB Gladiator NXT Evos. Full disclosure, these sticks were given to me free of charge from VKB for the purpose of using them during my live streams. Furthermore, using code SUBLIMINAL at checkout with VKB saves you 5%, but they do not monetarily support the channel. They have not paid me to make this review or seen it prior to publishing. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the VKB Gladiator NXT Evos, and we're starting right now. Let's start by going over the grip. There are two different grips available for the NXT Evos that we need to discuss before moving forward. There's the premium and the standard. We'll start with the standard, and then I'll discuss what extras you get with the premiums. The standard features a lockable twist or Z axis. You can lock this by adding an included screw to this hole at the base of the stick. Personally, my right stick twist is no longer bound to roll because I moved it to my pedals. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see a video on those. And even though this is left unbound, I've never felt the need to actually lock it. It's stable enough without it. For the twist, VKB uses a contactless Mars sensor to measure the twist action. In short, this Mars sensor gives you much higher sensitivity and accuracy when you twist. There are a few of these sensors throughout the NXTs that I will discuss later. Link in the description to an article on this Mars sensor versus the HAL effect sensor. Let's go over the buttons. It has one dual action trigger. This simply means pulling the trigger halfway is one button press and pulling it down all the way is another. Personally, I use this to separate my fire groups. In Star Citizen, this can be used to separate your ballistics from energy, distortion from energy, and any future mix setups that could be added to the game in the future. And for you Sentinel pilots out there, your weapons from your EMP. Pulling this in has a satisfying click on the first stage and another smaller, less audible click on the last stage. For hats, the standard comes with three four-way center push hat switches. These feel sturdy without rattle and gives good enough feedback so that you know when you've pressed it and what direction you've pushed it to. They are also textured for non-slip operation. There are four buttons in the following locations, A2, B1, C1, and D1. These are all very straightforward. I will let you guys hear how these buttons sound after I get done covering what the premiums offer. There are programmable red and RGB LEDs. VKB does have a guide on how to custom program these. It's not too complicated, however, it's much more involved than you'd expect for such a simple task. And finally, it comes with two interchangeable palm rests for a total of three adjustable sizes. The larger palm rest seems to be designed for petite or child users. With this added, I feel like I have to reach down just to hit that D1 pinky button, and everything else feels really cramped. The second one could work for me, and I like the rubber grip, but it seems a little tight. Personally, I feel like my hands are a little too big to use this, but the permanent built-in palm rest it comes with is perfect. A common complaint I hear is that these can be uncomfortable if you have larger hands. I would say my hands are slightly larger than average, but here's my hand and a ruler for scale. Your experience will certainly vary, but I hope this info gives you the help you need to make a good decision. That's it for the standard grip. Here's what the premium offers on top of those features. Before that, let's take a minute to thank this video sponsor, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is one of the leading VPNs available for personal use. Anytime you connect to an open Wi-Fi network, you're at risk of hackers. And I don't know about you, but my passwords could lead to them getting thousands of dollars of expensive JPEGs. ExpressVPN encrypts your network data with the best in-class encryption. Beyond personal security, there are tons of reasons to consider ExpressVPN. It prevents your service provider from accessing your browsing history and app usage and selling that info to ad companies. It masks your IP devices, making it much more difficult for companies to match your activity and collect your data. And the coolest part, in my opinion, 
ExpressVPN gives you unrestricted access to all parts of the internet, allowing you to access geo-restricted content from around the world and allowing you to jump servers with ease. I have found that some problems with logging into Star Citizen can be circumvented by switching servers. To get your first three months free of ExpressVPN, click the link below and start protecting your JPEGs. First is the rapid fire trigger. This trigger is placed just above the dual stage trigger and it has two buttons, one for when you push it up and another for when you pull it down. The C1 button on the thumb rest is replaced with a four way hat with center push, giving you an extra four buttons. The last input on the premium is the eight way analog mini stick with center push. This can be toggled to and from an eight way hat to an analog mini stick by clicking in the stick. When in analog stick mode, this red light will appear. As for the analog stick, it works good enough that you could use it to actually walk around and look in the verse. However, personally, I would not use this for FPS gameplay, as I'm sure it's not intended for that. As for the eight-way hat, it works similar to the other hats, but it's more loose and free because it doesn't have the detents. It should be noted that the eight-way function is not currently supported by Star Citizen, so functionally, it is just a four-way hat. On my left stick, I use this to control my speed limiter. And on the right stick, I use it to target hostiles because it can be easily flicked in the intended direction. Finally, if there's a premium option you don't like, replacement parts are provided in case you want to change it. They come included with the push button and hat switch module, and even a trigger cover for if you decide to remove the rapid fire trigger. Essentially, if you decided you would prefer the standard over the premium, you could just downgrade it yourself. Not sure why you want to do that though. I already know the comments are going to be flooded with the question, should I buy the premiums or the standard or should I buy one of each? The answer is buy the premiums. There are a few reasons. Star Citizen is a complicated game with a huge library of different bindings that you can make use of. Put simply, the more buttons you have, the more things you can do without taking your hands off the sticks. When I set up the bindings for my premium sticks, I used every single button. Without the extra buttons, I would have had to use a modifier via a program like joy to key or Joystick Gremlin. Having as many buttons as I have, I don't need programs like those to complicate my setup. Another reason is if you want to use or start using another user's binding configs, they will probably be using the premiums, so it won't be fully compatible. By the way, links to my bindings for dual NXTs or NXT EVOs are here in the info card above. The last reason is because you won't look back and regret it. However, you might regret not upgrading. You have no regrets? Dad? No, nope. not one? Nope. <laughs> There is a premium upgrade kit on their store, but it's $40 per stick plus shipping. So in my personal opinion, it's worth the extra $30 per stick for the premiums. Before we go over the base, here's how each button functions and sounds. The standard and the premium only refers to the Cosmo SEMA grip. As far as the NXT EVO base is concerned, there is no difference between the standard and premium, or even left or right. Before we get to the internals, let's start with the functionality on the outside. On top, we have buttons F1 through F3. These are pretty straightforward. Below, we have an auto centering three position switch. Pushing this up is one button press, pushing this down is another and once you let it go, it returns back to center. 
A good example used for this would be opening and closing doors. On the right side is an encoder wheel. Scrolling up on the encoder wheel is a button press, and as you continue to scroll up, it continues to press that button. Same with the down motion. A good example for this would be raising and lowering your countermeasure count. Lastly, and one of my favorite features is the throttle wheel. This can be used for a wide range of things. One of my favorites is thrust output or acceleration limiter in the bindings menu. This reduces how quickly you can accelerate and can make landing easier without having to reduce your speed limiter. Fair warning, if you add this as a binding and the wheel gets moved into the down position, your ship won't be able to leave the pad and it could take you a while to figure out why. The biggest game changer was using this for mining. I don't understand exactly why, but it's much easier to keep that power output in line by just slowly moving this up and down, rather than rapidly scroll wheeling up or down to keep it steady. It's much more precise and manageable. Here's how these buttons and functions sound. It's easy to remove the base plate via the four screws at the bottom. This base plate is made of steel, so it's pretty hefty. This helps weigh down the sticks and makes them much more usable if you don't or can't mount them. They have anti-slip pads at the bottom and they do an excellent job. I used Thrustmaster's T16,000Ms for two years and the difference is night and day. However, I can say that it is not a replacement for a good solid mounting solution. The base does have four screw holes to mount them directly to your desk. However, if you're like me, that's just a bit too destructive. So a mounting solution like Monster Tech, Predator Mounts, or even VKB's line of mounts is the ideal solution. However, the stability of the VKB's does not make mounting them a necessity, rather just a nice to have. If you want my recommendation, for US residents, the overall cost for Predator Mounts is much cheaper, especially with the free shipping on orders over 100 bucks. So they come highly recommended by me. Full disclosure, using code subliminal at checkout with Predator Mounts will save you 5% on your order and send me a small kickback that does support this channel. So take my recommendation as you will. All right, let's open this thing up and see what we have under the hood. Inside, we see that the NXT Evos are made from industrial grade ABS plastic. This plastic is lightweight and durable and a great design and engineering choice by VKB to make an affordable but durable mid-range stick. In no particular order, we could see two interchangeable springs. 20 pound springs are installed, but you're given 30 pound or strong springs, as well as 10 pound or soft springs to be swapped out for a more custom feel. They also give you six spares. Why have spares you ask? Because they could break. By April, 2023, I will have been using the NXTs for two years and I've had my springs break on me once. It happened to me in the middle of combat while I was live on Twitch. I was able to finish the fight Quantum to my next bounty, unmount the sticks, remove the broken spring, add the new one, remount the sticks, and was done by the time my ship reached Crusader from Hurston. It started out as kind of a scary moment and ended with me feeling good about it happening. Because now that I saw how easy it was, I'm more comfortable swapping the springs for different weights to customize the feel to my liking. Those Mars sensors we talked about earlier are also in the base for both the X and Y axis. For even more of a custom feel, the Evos come with adjustable dry clutches. The two at the top are to adjust the Y axis and the one at the bottom is for the X axis. These can be adjusted with the included Allen key. These dry clutches add friction that affect how easily the stick can return to center. Personally, I like the X axis on my left stick to be kind of loose and the Y axis to be quite firm. It gives me that throttle feel, but also allows me to easily strafe left and right. You can even remove the Y-axis spring so it can't return to center, essentially turning it into a true throttle. As for my right stick, I prefer that to be as loose as possible. It's all just a personal preference, but at least these sticks have the option. And let me say, having a dry clutch in a stick in this price range is nothing short of amazing. The new Evo's gimbal now also includes ball bearings. This is a noticeable improvement over the previous version. 
The gimbal is made from glass fiber reinforced plastic. This is a relief for those of you who may be concerned with the lack of metal components used in the base. But that isn't necessarily a bad thing and I'll clarify this more in my pros and cons section of this video. New to the Evos over the previous model is the addition of a 32-bit ARM controller. Essentially, this is a CPU upgrade for the sticks that allows them to be expanded out to support the addition of current and future GNX systems. Comment below if you'd be interested in seeing a video on some of those. Last thing, inside the base is a place to install the included X-axis lock plate. This is great for users who want to swap between games like Star Citizen with 6 degrees of freedom to games like DCS that can't really benefit from the extra axis. Let's talk about the pros and cons. The Gladiator NXTs are a great value. Price is subjective and everyone has a different budget, but the feedback I get from most of you is that these are affordable and a great value. Durable for the cost. The ABS plastic was a great design choice and it keeps the sticks affordable by not using any metal and it's strong enough for most pilots uses. They are modular. Having the option to buy and install the Omnithrottle adapter, having the option to swap some of the premium buttons and features for the standard edition, to being able to incorporate the entire GNX suite of products, it's clear that these can be molded to fit anyone's needs. User serviceability. Did you buy the NXTs before the release of the Evos? Just buy an upgrade kit. Broke a spring like I did? Fix it before your ships get done quantuming across the system. VKB clearly designs these with user serviceability in mind. If a part breaks, it saves time and money to just send you the replacement part, and you can easily replace that broken part, rather than sending the sticks in for a RMA repair. They're upgradable. I don't see this talked about much, but the premium Cosmo SEMA grip from the NXT EVOs is the same from the VKB Gunfighter series. The all-metal Gunfighter gimbal is arguably the best on the market, and if you come across a couple of pretty pennies, it's nice to know that you can upgrade them without having to buy new grips. If you want VKB to send me some of these to try out and review, let them know in the comments below. They're customizable. Between the dampeners and dry clutch to the springs and lockable axis, you can really get these sticks dialed into your liking, no matter what your preference. Community support. Because there is literally no competitor in this price range, most Star Citizen users who are using sticks are using Gladiator and XT, meaning you can go online to places like Reddit, my Discord and others like it to get help on Star Citizen specific things. I even make my dual NXT bindings public and publish them to the community every patch. I'm sure there's a lot more pros, but this video is too long, so let's get to the bad. Although the ABS plastic is the best option for VKB to use in these sticks in this price range, having all plastic means that things can break. However, asking for anything more is kind of unreasonable at this price range, but I figured I'd mention it. If that is a concern for you and you're comfortable spending over $200 more per stick, then look at the VKB gunfighters. The screws used to tighten or loosen the clutch can be loosened too much and the screw can fall out into the base. This happened to me once and I was able to quickly screw it back in just a little bit farther this time. Update, this issue has been addressed in later iterations. I just checked out the Nubifiers review and saw this upgrade. Good on you, VKB. I didn't get a chance to talk about VKB software, but in a nutshell, it's very complicated. Almost like it was designed as an internal tool and ported over to consumer use. This may be a good thing for some of you who like to tinker, but it could be daunting for others. It should be noted that they do have setup and troubleshooting videos on their YouTube channel that are very helpful, but I don't diddle around in there because I feel like I could break something and have to reset it. Speaking of those videos, other than a quick setup guide on their YouTube channel, this is your main source of documentation on these sticks. No manual to read. Each product comes with a short quick start guide and QR code that links you to the video setup guide that you need. Personally, I would like to have seen something more than this, but maybe this is the route manufacturers are going. Lastly, some feedback from the community is that these sticks can be uncomfortable for those of us who have larger hands. That's all I got. So who are these sticks for? Everyone, like literally almost everyone. I used Thrustmaster T16,000Ms for about two years before upgrading to the NXTs. They never broke on me, although the Z-axis issue is a common complaint in the community. However, it sucked having only four buttons and one hat per stick. The buttons on the base were way too hard to hit without spending an embarrassing amount of time staring down at the buttons trying to remember what you bound. Star Citizen is a very complicated game, and with so many things to bind, you'd have to use software like Joystick Gremlin or Joy to Key to add a modifier button, and you still wouldn't have as many binding options as you would have with the NXTs. 
On the higher end, of course, VKB offers their flagship Gunfighter series and Burple has their line of products, but they are more than twice the price. I get asked the question, should I spend the extra money on the VKBs or get something cheaper like the T16,000Ms or Logitech 3D Pros? If you can flex your budget to include the VKBs, then 100% get them, even if it means saving up for a little while longer. However, if the cost is way outside your budget, then the T16,000Ms do add enough immersion for me to recommend them. As for the 3D Pros, stay away from those. Most of you watching play Star Citizen, and let me tell you, internet ships that you can just buy in game is a poor investment compared to something like this. If you're a space marshal or higher, and you're not rocking NXTs or better, you might want to check your priorities. This has been the best upgrade to my Star Citizen experience, hands down.